What's up? This is Rebel Radio. What up? What up? This is DJ Newmark. This is Peanut Butter Wolf. It's your boy. It's okay. Keep checking out Rebel Radio. Rebel Radio. This is Rebel Radio. We're in the place right here. Uh-huh. Rebel Radio is going down. What did you say? Rebel Radio? Oh, wait. Let's do it again. Rebel Radio. Yo, welcome back to Rebel Radio. Today is a very special part two of my interview with DJ Hoppa. We had so much good stuff last week that we had to split it up into two. So I hope you went and checked out the last one. If you're hearing this for the first time, go back and listen to that one. If not, we power on. DJ Hoppa, if you don't know him, he's the director of the Scratch DJ Academy. He's got his own label, I think, called Feeling Good Music. He's also the host of Music Mornings on Dash. And as you'll hear, he's a bit of an aspiring life coach. He's got some great stories about his personal battles with epilepsy um, and what what that's taught him in his life and how that's um, given him some really interesting challenges and interesting tools to work with in his life and career. Uh, The big lessons in this coming up is how to not let other people limit what you can do and, uh, and why you should eliminate always and never from your vocabulary. Good stuff there as well as some crazy stories about uh, Hoppa's near-death experience. And now this is DJ Hoppa. Well, so I want to talk about something a little, you know, personal that that relates to yeah. that. And, I, I, you know, I know that you have epilepsy. Yeah. And it, you know... I've seen some of the videos of you talking about that publicly. Yep. Yep. Um, so I don't know much about that, uh, but it doesn't <clears throat> sound like fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so I'm I'm curious, how does that affect your career as a DJ and and you know all the stress and stuff that, that you know we're Man, talking about? Man, I mean, I'm I'm so fortunate to be in a position to be able to talk about this, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I in off. Oftentimes, I feel like I'm a voice for the voiceless. Um, and uh, man, I mean, I'll, I'll give you kind of the quick, the quicker version of the story. But um, I was in high school at Wash, <clears throat> senior year of high school. I'd been accepted to UCLA on a full ride already. And um, I went to sleep one night. And I mean, we're in the spring, man. So I'd already been accepted. Like, literally, the only thing I had left were several AP tests. Um, but I wasn't really stressed about any of that. I mean, I'd already. I'd already gotten to where I wanted to go, right. you know? Sure. Um, they weren't going to pull my scholarship or anything. Um, so that was just kind of cherry on top stuff. And, you know, I <clears throat> I like to paint this picture because I want people to know how, like, ridiculous it was. I mean, like, <laughs> it... Um, I was taking... Wash was an open campus for lunch, and so um, I had this great relationship with this English teacher, AP English teacher that we had, and me and my buddies would take her red... Uh, drop top convertible BMW out to lunch. Like she would give us the keys to her car. Wow. And we would take her car out for lunch. Like not with her or nothing. Like she would stay at school and we would just take her car and like, you know, come back for, you know, whenever we wanted sort of, you know, and like that was how ridiculous it was. Like literally I was like on top of the world and, um, Man, like one night I went to sleep, woke up in the middle of my floor, had no idea what happened mm. and tried to kind of shake it off, thought I had a bad dream. Um, next night, same thing. Um, this time I wake up and my mom and my sister are both like standing over me, like crying. Um, they rush me to the hospital. Uh, ambulance comes and everything. They rush me to the hospital. They start doing a bunch of tests. And all of a sudden now, instead of worried about where we're going to go for lunch yeah. in, in my teacher's you know BMW, now... Uh, I'm trying to figure out like what the hell is epilepsy mm. and they're like, you know, you've you suffered from a seizure It's probably what happened the night before um, This is uh, This is now your new reality and um, I'm sitting in a neurologist's office like doped up on you know meds because they're testing stuff, mm-hmm. you know, and so mm-hmm. it was practically a vegetable for like two weeks um, and I'm sitting in a neurologist's office and he's telling me, you know, somebody with your condition at this state in your condition, um, I don't think you should leave for school. And I 
also think that maybe you should rethink college all the way around. And I'm like, oh, shit. what? Yeah. No, no. And I was like, in you know, basically, I was like, go fuck yourself. I'm going mm-hmm. to UCLA. Um, you. <clears throat> and in, and in hindsight, man, I can't. I mean, I've got you know, I got two little ones. I got mm-hmm. two little daughters, and like, I still can't believe my parents like agreed to me going <laughs> to UCLA. And I'm so grateful that they trusted my own internal instincts and my own you know judgment to do so, yeah. and gave me that freedom because. You know, um, man, I don't know what I would do if if I were in their shoes, you know, and um, I can't even imagine like the fear that they would have. I mean, probably a lot of sleepless nights, you know, sending their kid who's just been diagnosed with epilepsy to a whole nother city to live on his own at college. And, you know, I mean, in hindsight, the neurologist, um, I felt like had good intent. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But. The way in which it was delivered in his bedside manner was not done in the right sort of way. Right. And um, a part of me, too, I appreciate, <laughs> I'm thankful for my my rebellious attitude uh, <laughs> when I'm Rebel Radio. I appreciate my rebellious attitude at that point, too, to not have that filter. Because if that were to happen today, uh, me being the 36-year-old me probably would have act a bit differently you know what i'm saying like i didn't have anything to lose at 17 really you know um whereas now at 36 i mean i certainly have a lot to lose of course so um i say all that to just also be a constant reminder to myself and to others out there um to sort of trust that inner gut sometimes Mm -hmm. and like you know the older we all get you know, the more some of these conversations and these conversations with doctors are going to come up, mm-hmm. you know, and, and not to s- t- say to a doctor at 36 to go fuck himself. But um, but to also like just kind of for me, it's a reminder to keep that in mind, though, too, of yeah. like, you know, um, you're going to be the best judge of what you can or can't do. So and I think there's a lot of people that are out there um, epileptic or not that are told you can't do this, you can do this, but you can't do this. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think like, uh, it's really important for people to like, sure, take that, but take that with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Um, Don't be, you know, don't be reckless, Mm -hmm. you know, but also don't be overly cautious. Like you really afford yourself, uh, you cheat yourself out of a lot of experiences if you weren't. I mean, I, man, I think back and like, what if I didn't go? Like, what if I said, yeah, okay, uh, uh, yeah, sure, you know, uh, I'll stay home. Uh, man, I can't even imagine the, the different trajectory my life would have been. Um, For sure. And I think we all have, <laughs> you know, these self-limiting beliefs, right? Yeah. And, and you know, yours may be more extreme in some ways yeah. than others. But, um, but I think it's a great point because it's ultimately, you know, it's about what you do in the face of those things, right? And do you accept them? One hundred percent. Nor do you challenge them. One hundred percent. And I think like um, I'm not, I'm not here to tell everybody that. Like, actually, it's funny. I um, I just came from this two day workshop of like really that I felt was like probably one of the best things that I could have done for myself. It was um, a group of people. Um, I want to shout them out too. Um, a friend of mine, Caduce, um, who used to be a, a VJ on MTV. Okay. Uh, he's now sort of transitioned into. Um, coaching Mm. and helping people, um, life coach sort of things, um, really with an entertainment kind of focus, Mm -hmm. him and his, his girl, Carmina, they're fantastic people, but they have this program called the camera ready. Um, but it was, it's not so much even about like, you know, a hosting workshop or preparing for that necessarily. It's really about like, you know, you discovering more about you Mm. as a person, you know, and kind of doing a deeper dive into you. But yeah. <clears throat> one of the things that came out of that, not inside the workshop, but in my sort of journaling after the fact, was this concept around changing some of my language. Mm. Um, and one of the things that I really um, expressed even to my staff, uh, my teaching staff in, in L.A. yesterday, was uh, eliminating the words always and never from your vocabulary. Okay. And um, this concept of that... No, I will never do this. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, when I was 22, I said I would never DJ a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
funny enough, I've done like seven weddings already this year, and I right. really enjoy you know yeah, DJing sure. weddings these days. It feels like that changed, like <clears throat> that stigma. Oh, for sure. Like I, you know, I I, I, I had Mike B, you know, the Mike B, right, on the show, and he right. DJed my wedding, right, and like I, you know. And I was like embarrassed kind of to ask my friends who were DJs. Right. I had a, like he was a great DJ, but also I didn't know him. Right. So I didn't have, so, but I had a lot of friends that were DJs and I was too embarrassed to ask To ask them. your friends who you know. Because it's like a DJ. cheesy thing back right. then. Right. And I've been married 13 years. So right. back then it was like a cheesy thing to DJ a wedding. <laughs> right. So anyway. But yeah, you know, and, and, and this idea of even the opposite of saying always, you know, that like I will always be DJing yeah like I will always be a hip-hop head or whatever mm -hmm. I mean like you know I mean there's so many different instances mm -hmm. in which like always and never are very limiting words you know and the power sure. of words I and mean, we I think we all know the power of, of words you know so I think like um, all that to say that I think changing your mindset and being somebody who is open to change and open to trying new things and open to sort of taking some risks, you know, taking maybe some calculated risks, mm -hmm, you know, but, mm -hmm. but taking risk and not being so risk averse. Like, I think it's important right. for people out there to keep that in mind. And, and, you know, honestly, one of my big missions with epilepsy in particular is, um, I didn't realize this until many years later, but just so that you guys all know that are out there, I was embarrassed of my epilepsy for a long time. Yeah. Uh, it took me about 10 years to be okay with it. And um, this didn't come till many years later. Um, I, so just so everybody knows, there's like a happy ending to the epilepsy story. Um, you know, my freshman year of UCLA was the toughest year to date um, for me. Mm. I went from, I graduated, uh, I graduated WASH with a 4.25 GPA. Um, I'm at, and without really even trying. And then I'm at UCLA and I'm getting D's and F's and incompletes. And part of that was just being at UCLA and yeah. like the bar was higher. Yeah, yeah. But a big part of it too was I was having a seizure every week. So, and you know, I'm trying to live a, a quote unquote normal freshman year as much as possible, mm -hmm. you know, but seizures are brought on and sort of can be sparked by stress, mm -hmm. lack of sleep, mm -hmm. irregular diet, mm -hmm. Drugs. I mean, this. So, I mean, like, this is the, so like the college. college. This yeah. is the college, you know, lifestyle, man. Wow. Um, and so it was like the perfect storm. And you know, I'm trying to be as normal as possible. I'm trying to throw these parties, you know, in our dorm. I'm, you know, I'm drinking. I'm yeah. doing other things, like, yeah. you know, and uh, and yeah, man, having a seizure every week, being rushed to the hospital every week. Um, yeah. Had a oh, moment actually where. Uh, you know, they say, I don't know if you've ever experienced a near, a near death experience, but, um, I certainly have, um, there were moments where uh, at the lowest point, um, I came home from school, I came home from class one day. I was the only one at home. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm laying in my bed. I felt hot, felt like a fever I'm laying in bed. And this is before I had a cell phone or anything like that. Um, I'm like feeling like I cannot control how hot I'm getting. And I look over to the phone and I'm like, I need to call somebody. And I look towards the, like the landline that's sitting on, you know, my roommate's desk over here. And um, I can't move my body. Like I literally cannot move my arms, can't move oh. my anything. And I'm just like, I'm starting to like just sweat profusely. And I'm just like, man, something is, is wrong here. I need to do something about this. And I just start crying because at that point I was just like, I, I feel completely helpless. Uh, nobody's home. Yeah, this is this might just be it. Yeah. Everything goes white. Um, I start seeing this like real flashing. I mean, they the, this whole thing of your life flashing before your mm -hmm. eyes, and like mm -hmm. I mean, literally, like it was this real that was playing on this side and on this side, and then it would stop, and it would be some random thing. It would be like me and my sister playing outside my parents' house, playing catch <laughs> outside my parents' house, and then, like fast forward and like other like other imagery. Next thing I know, I wake up and I'm in the emergency room. They're like, uh, your roommates brought you in here. When they brought you in, you had a 107 degree fever. Oh my god! They're like, we almost, we we almost lost you. <clears throat> um, wow. And so, you know, for me, one thing that epilepsy has really done for me, though, is it's really given me a sense of appreciation for for life. Mm. 
and for really taking advantage of every single moment of every single day. And I'm so grateful for that because when I, at the start of this story, I told you, you know, I'm taking my freaking teacher's car out for lunch. And like, <laughs> I literally felt invincible. Yeah, yeah. And okay. I think this was, um, you know, no matter what your faith is, um, for me, like, I believe that this was like God's way of saying like, yo, you've got this too easy, man. Mm -hmm. Like, and you're going to go down this really destructive path if I don't give you something to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, epilepsy was that challenge for me to have to like really work on and really not necessarily slow down because I think I actually sped up right. because of it. Right. Um, my seizures only happen at night when I was mm -hmm. sleeping. Mm -hmm. So I then started not wanting to sleep. Not sleeping, yeah. And I mean like, and also just like this, that in combination with just like never knowing like when, mm -hmm. when my time would come, I like, I mean, that was part of why I was so successful with like our distribution company. I'm calling people and I don't care if you say no, right. I might die tomorrow. Right. Like, I really don't care. Like, I, like, what do I have to lose to be like, yo, are you going to take 20 of these or 30? Right. You know, like I have yeah. no, there's, there's nothing you could say that would phase me that would be like, oh man, okay. You know, and, and it's funny because now I feel like I've been, first of all, I've been seizure free for 10 years. Which, is, which has been huge. And a yeah. big part of that was also finding the right doctor, mm -hmm. uh, finding the right medication at the time mm -hmm. to like get me better and kind of stop, stop the avalanche, right. you know, yeah. slow that That's down. Huge. And then once I was able to do that, I was able to focus on other things, like focus on other aspects of my health. I started eating better, mm -hmm. started, you know, really trying to do more um, and be more active. I mean, I was an athlete in, in high school, but... You know, some of this kind of got me sluggish and got me, you know, yeah. wanting to not not be as sure. active. But, you know, all of that has really certainly helped too. And I mean, at currently, man, I'm not on any medication either. Like I've weaned myself off of medication. Um, I've been seizure free for 10 years. And it's something that like um, I now have the ability and the power, though, to be able to make a difference for the people that aren't necessarily in that same boat. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people out there that have seizures, not on a weekly basis, but on a hourly basis, man. I mean, there's... Is that right? Yeah, there's kids that are out there that are... I mean, it's it's the most heart-wrenching thing, man, to, like, see a, a young kid, you know, maybe a, a teenage kid who's full of life mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden snaps into a seizure and comes back from it and is still full of life and then snaps back into a seizure and, like because of that, isn't able to live yeah. uh, to his or her fullest potential. You know what I mean? And not even just kids, but adults, you know, full-blown adults who are losing their job because uh, because of a seizure, mm -hmm. you know? like, mm -hmm. um, And there's such this stigma around it still. And it's a very scary thing. It's actually, you know, something that people should know is that, you know, if, if I'm having a seizure, I actually won't even remember that. Right. You know, like I'm going to wake up and I'm, my body's going to be sore and I'm going to feel out of it. Um, but the trauma isn't necessarily on my side. It's right. on your side. Yeah, it's on like you, the around. trauma of, right, seeing that yeah. and oh, that sure. unknown is, is is scary for people. But, you know, one of the things that I really hope to do, man, is to try and destigmatize epilepsy. Mm. And I think that there's a lot of ways to do that, in my opinion. And like, um, for me, one of the biggest things that I want to do is to make this relatable. Mm -hmm. So just because you don't have epilepsy and just because you don't have seizures doesn't mean that you can't understand how I feel about of course. that, right? And I think that if we can kind of humanize this and make this more universal, I think it takes some of the wind out of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there are one, this is a crazy step. One in 26 Americans have epilepsy. Yeah, I read that. That's, that's so crazy. Dude, yeah. I, I, I see more than 26 people a day, yeah. you know? Sure. Um, you know, oftentimes I'm in a club playing, uh, you know, or in a, a situation where there's 500 people. Okay, well, if you do the math, right. wow, yeah. you know, four and, a, four and a hundred, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. yeah, 20 people essentially have epilepsy in that room. Wow. It's insane, man, but nobody's talking about it, yeah. you know, and, and it's, I'm not the big fish uh, mm -hmm. that's really going to reel in, you know, the 
all of the exposure, but anything that I can do to kind of mobilize the army that's out there and to get people to feel okay with this. And I also know the other side of it. So I was telling you is I was not okay with this for many years. Uh, and it was Jed who I have to thank. I mean, it, it was Jed who really made me talk about this. Mm. And we were at lunch one day and I mean, I hope Jed doesn't mind me sharing this, but I think it's really powerful. We're at lunch one day and, um, He's like, I think you should really share your story. I've been thinking about it. And, you know, I let the close people in my circle know mm -hmm. about the epilepsy side of it, especially if something were to ever happen, you yeah. know. But um, he was like, I think you should talk about this. And I was like, nah, I don't, you know, nobody wants to hear that. And I'm not really wanting to talk about this. And at the time, I was on KTLA every morning. Um, DJing on the news. I was the Paul Schaefer of the morning news, uh, for those who don't know. Um, and I did that for two and a half years. Um, yeah. And it was great, man. Um, and so, <clears throat> it's like, I think you should talk about it. I was like, no, no, no. And he was like, you know, I'm bipolar. And it, dude, it like literally knocked me back in my chair. I was yeah. just being like, what? Yeah. You're bipolar? Wow. Uh, and my knee-jerk reaction was like, you don't look like you're bipolar. <laughs> and he was like, you don't look like you have epilepsy. And I was like, okay, you got me. Um, and then from that moment on, like we, uh, Jed reached out to um, the biggest epilepsy organization at the time, which was epilepsy.com. And um, yeah, man, I started to talk about my story. And, mm -hmm. you know, it felt so good I bet. to talk about it. Yeah. Um, and the, we debuted this on air on the KTLA morning show um, around the first national walk mm -hmm. in DC for epilepsy that was that I was a part of and we talked about this on air as soon as we cut there were four anchors on the desk two of them instantly had stories about this my best friend growing up had a seizure in front of me mm. and I've never thought about that until now mm -hmm. um, my sister growing up had epilepsy mm -hmm. and had seizures and, you know, still deals with that. You know, so to me, man, like, uh, I want this to be something that people look at not as this, like, disease or this thing that, like, oh, I don't have epilepsy. I can, you right, know, right, sure. keep yeah. keep scrolling, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and I think oftentimes that's also our fault like within the epilepsy community because we lead with that mm -hmm. we lead with like here's 10 facts about epilepsy right, here's right, right. Blah, blah 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 and it's so clinical yeah, and it's not, not human no right. it's not and and that's the part that's really off-putting because yeah. i know that i can feel that way too sometimes about like i'm looking at lupus and i'm just like oh sure. don't have lupus so right. you know no big deal Right. And, you know, you go to the Not grocery right. store, right? And they're like, do you want to donate a dollar to whatever? And you're just like, eh, well, right. you know, but if there's an actual connection. For sure. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. If, you're, if your mother had breast cancer, you would that be that much more inclined to, like, listen to that message, yeah. right? And so <clears throat> I, my biggest thing is to try to get people to get out there, talk about it, talk about this whole thing. And really also to, on the humanizing part, to not make this about epilepsy but to make it about what the human part of it is which is this is a challenge yeah. this is um a struggle that you have to go through and maybe on a daily basis maybe on a weekly basis a monthly basis or whatever it might be but this is a challenge that somebody is going through and i think everybody can relate to challenge so so let's <laughs> talk about that with you know this obviously is has been a major challenge and you've had other interesting challenges yeah um what what decision has had the biggest impact on your career? Hmm. I think, I mean, you know, if I want to go all the way there, I think it, you know, was obviously coming to L.A. That was, and staying in L.A., that, that's mm -hmm. been, like, the biggest impact. But, you know, every day I make a decision that has a ripple effect. Um, you know, I made a, I've made decisions years ago that um, are now having effects now. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like uh, my decision, let's say, even to say yes to that to the KTLA opportunity, um, you know, sure. has had had effects. Yeah. You know, um, the decision to um, continue to teach or to be a part of the school, like, will have ripple effects later on in life that I. You know, we've created a community that exists. I've taught people, I've given people a skill set that 
not only is applicable to DJing, but is applicable to life in general. Mm -hmm. And years from now, you know, my real hope is that years from now, you know, I'm going to bump into somebody, you know, 20 years from now, let's say, and they're just like, oh my God, like that, that decision for me of taking classes at scratch yeah. changed my trajectory, changed my life. And so, you know, to me, it's, it's hard to identify one. And I think that there's so many um, throughout my life that have led to that, which is also then, you know, again, something to be considered on a daily basis for me of like, you know, the decisions to be made. I mean, even the decision to say yes to coming on to your show today is, yeah. is um, going to have effects beyond beyond just this conversation you know <laughs> and um i think it's important for everybody out there to, to just keep that in mind too is that a decision that you make today um will have real effects positive or negative mm -hmm. um down the road in that you know not not to then the idea is not to scare anybody into like oh then i shouldn't make a decision you know right. but more so that just i think keep that in mind and i'm a true believer of um i've got several tattoos and one of one of them or two of them that i'm like actually technically all of them but the the, the three that i think are the most um that are reminders for me are life's too short which is on my forum here um and then i've got follow your heart and lead with passion mm -hmm. on the other and i think like to me those are like great mantras for me as a reminder mm -hmm. for myself mm -hmm. um and it's part of the reason why um, even with my tattoos that are faced inward, uh, for reminders for myself of that. And, um, yeah, I think as long as you're, as long as you're thinking to yourself, is this authentically me? Is this really me? Or am I making this decision, this decision for somebody else? Yeah. Or because I'm hoping for a different outcome, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to really following mm -hmm. what my gut instinct is and what my heart is telling me to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Hey, so I have a little speed round. <laughs> okay. Before we wrap it cool. up. Cool, let's do um, it. So, uh, <clears throat> if you can go back to um, your 18-year-old self. Yeah. And, and give one piece of advice, what would you say? Um, I would say fight through it because it'll be better like this will get better i think at 18 i was that was right in the thick of me going through all of that and i think yeah. like if i could give myself reassurance um that would be great i mean i don't regret anything at all i think even those instances and that that instance that i described to you of of almost you know losing my life was a really important thing to go through sure and so i wouldn't want to prevent my 18 year old self from having any of those experiences but just almost reassurance that like it'll be okay mm -hmm. like i'm on the other side mm -hmm. and this all works out mm -hmm. you know? yeah what is there a talent you always wish you had more of um i wish i could play more instruments um i wish i could play the piano or the, the or the guitar or something like that i mean i played the drums and i'm more of a percussion based dude and like you know that obviously helps with the rhythm with djing mm -hmm. but um i definitely wish i could play something or have the ability to sing yeah. Uh, my wife is a singer songwriter, so um, luckily I have that still at home. Right. Um, and that that part to me is is cool. But yeah, yeah, I guess probably to play another instrument. Interesting. So we so I know we're we're almost out of time, but you know we haven't talked at all about feeling good. Oh yeah. And, and the music that you're making. Yeah. And so you know just maybe quickly give us give us the quick rundown of that, and I'm curious, you know why with everything else. That you're doing like why why are you making music and like yeah i think so we created this act called feeling good p-h-i-l and good and the whole concept behind it is that it's a dj-led act uh with live instruments mm -hmm. uh sort of in if i had to put a genre to it it's uh you know tropical house deep house like little on that pop side of things too a little major laser influence dj snake influence in there too mm -hmm. um, but also you know it's got a latin twist to it it's got the easiest way i describe our sound is feel good sound mm -hmm. um and that's where that feeling good sort of comes from too but um, yeah, we've been working on a lot of remixes. Uh, we just released a an official remix of Bell Biv DeVoe Poison. Yeah, I saw that. Um, and did like a deep so. house treatment to it. Thank you, man. Um, you know, and added in live horns, 
live instrumentation. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. And for me, it's just another creative outlet. Um, I collaborate with two other uh, amazing people, um, DJs and producers, mm -hmm. uh, my man Dirty D and J Rhythm, and together we make up Feeling Good. And this idea of just being able to release music, I've actually learned more about the industry mm. uh, in the last 12 months than I have in the last 12 years. You know, wow. And I've, I've been in the, the industry, quote unquote industry for that long, but it's definitely different to be in the driver's seat uh, and to be talent and to then have to deal with all of the stuff that's out there in today's world. So sure. um, I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, we've got some new music coming in 2017. We're working with some great artists. We've got a track that we're finishing up with this guy down in Trinidad. Uh, his name is Sherwayne Winchester. Okay. Uh, he jumped on one of our remixes earlier this year. We've got an original record with him that we're getting ready to to get out there for Carnival down mm -hmm. in Trinidad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're excited about a lot of like what what will happen on that side. That's dope. Yeah. Nice. Well, we definitely have to check for that. Do you, are you um, do you collect anything? Records. Yeah. Uh, that's an obvious one. I, I collect records. I I was in this whole like collecting sneakers phase, and uh -huh. like I I grew out of that, man. I, the the one thing. If, it's a good one to grow. Yeah, out it's of. a good one to grow out of. I can't compete, man. <laughs> Some of these guys are crazy. Shout out to my man DJ Ski, who's just like yeah. ridiculous with it. I can't even keep up, sure. and I'm glad I'm not trying to. Um, that would be, also be maybe my 18 year old self. I would tell my 18 year old <laughs> self to slow down on the sneakers. Um, Smart. The if anything, the thing that I have the most of is headphones. Mm, okay. God bless all these headphone companies that are out there. But like, I mean, it, yeah, it's ridiculous. There's right. uh, too many headphone brands that are out there. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly oversaturated. Um, I'll take them though. Sure. sure. I mean, we can always use another set of headphones around <laughs> the house. But uh, that's definitely something I've got too many of. Right. So if I if I was on your team, if I worked, you know, for you at Scratch yeah. or, or in any of your endeavors, what what is something I would hear you say over and over? Oh man, um, God, say over and over again. I mean, nowadays, a big thing that I'm saying, uh, especially right now, is this whole concept of like eliminating this, like never or always. Like mm -hmm. I'm saying that all the time, like now. And um, I mean, there's constantly things that I go through, but probably one of the biggest things is I'm a I'm big on motivation and in um, my future self and some of the things that I'm working on and working towards, I'm really interested in pursuing um, a future as a coach, a deeper coach, okay. rather than just on the technical side. Yeah. Um, even in the classroom now, I work with a lot of um, my students on visualization technique, um, you know, organizational techniques, just ways to help like enhance just their everyday life okay. and um i do have several people that come to me for that and that it's certainly a passion of mine that i am really excited to to share with even more people moving forward so mm. um I, I definitely see like life coach sort of stuff in That's my future dope. yeah nice yeah who would you be most excited to learn is a fan of your work oh man there's so many people i mean i'm excited every, every time like i'm at this stage man where um and i hope i never leave this stage um because uh every follower i get on any platform or any you know especially on the feeling good side anybody who's like listened to our record or reposts our record or comments on a record like to me man I, i'm i'm just excited to see it like literally like i'm i'm i enjoy waking up and seeing that somebody has like followed this and you know um so it, it wouldn't necessarily be a particular person but just like anybody who's out there that like takes the time you know because i know that like i don't necessarily take the time to read through everybody's posts and everybody's sure. things you know yeah. so anybody who's really going to take the time to listen yeah uh, even the fact that you said that you listened to the poison record to me like that's that's exciting for me yeah. um that you know anybody out there is listening but obviously, like, there's people that I certainly look up to. Mm -hmm. um, and who, any who, who comes to mind? <clears throat> I mean, to me, man, like, you know, in terms of that whole bilingual side, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of guys that are out there that have done that in the music side that I really look up to. A guy like Richie Houghton, sort of on the electronic side, is like a tremendous uh, inspiration. Mm -hmm. Same with guys like on the hip-hop side, like a, like a Jay-Z even, mm -hmm. who, you know, um, are able to kind of, 
go between those worlds and even like Kanye to to some degree you know I think I really appreciate his creative vision and I think he's also he has infrastructure otherwise there would be no way sure. he would be where he's at you know yeah. but you know guys like that I certainly like look up to who are uh you know who sort of are that bilingual okay. straddle of the line and I think those would be the ones that'd be most. I don't think I think Kanye by. speaks his own language. That's true. That is absolutely true. He's got like his own separate like lane for sure. What's the last great book you read? Um, I did. The, I didn't read it, but I I listened to it, yeah. and it's um Tony Robbins that Money, counts. um oh, yeah. Tony Robbins book on money, and um, that definitely opened up my eyes. This last election year has opened up a lot of things in me, as I know it's done for other people. Mm -hmm. um, part of also me wanting to get into coaching is um, I actually want to take my skills of being bilingual and taking something complex and making it simple. I feel yeah. like I have the ability to do that. Yeah. I want to do that for um, financial literacy, for oh, creatives cool. as well. Nice. Like I feel like there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of confusion that's out there around that. And I know myself in particular, I've avoided some of those harder concepts mm -hmm. and those like grown up ideas of like taxes or yeah. budgeting or uh, retirement, investment, like I've, I've avoided a lot of that for many years. And my friends who speak that language haven't done a great job at being able to translate that for me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I can now, I've had a bit of a, an epiphany with it um, with another friend of mine. And we've been like kind of working on how we develop financial literacy for creative people mm. um, and make it digestible and try to make it as fun as possible and make it not as scary for people. That's totally um, there's, there's a lot of people out there that need that. Sure. absolutely man yeah. myself included you know yeah. i mean it's it's yeah, yeah. finally i've do. i've created this is the first time i've actually had uh life insurance mm -hmm. you know and yeah. uh, this is the first time I've, I've actually even thought about like what would happen i mean despite all the stuff i've told you already you know of like me trying to live day to day and like not really then planning for like my my daughter's future you yeah. know and like and my wife's future like even there now and so to me, man, like that's absolutely something that I really want to focus on with some of the coaching and some of that as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but Tony Robbins' money book really opened me up. And and actually the concept of audio books has, yeah. has you know, Game I'm on changer. radio, you have a radio show. Like yeah. I don't want to deter anybody from like listening to radio, but <laughs> um, at the same time, man, I mean like mix it up, mix yeah. it up because I think a lot of people that are out there um, are listening to the same 20 songs over yeah. and over again like mix it up you know and on that note too i've got my show over on dash radio um we're moving it to a morning show now oh cool so uh i'll be back in that same like sort of ktla time frame man i'll okay. be 7 a.m to 9 a.m every morning um, nice. on dash one uh we're gonna calling it we're actually calling it music mornings oh, cool. with dj hapa so yeah. i'm sort of making a shift in uh in my radio show uh to be able to I think give some more morning inspiration to people out there yeah, uh, yeah, musically yeah. and otherwise you know we'll be talking about some of the stuff that we've even talked about in here nice. on the morning show cool we're gonna look for that yep um okay what movie have you seen the most uh i mean probably something super cliche like the the godfather or something like that um you know what's one movie that i've watched over and over again though mm. for inspiration um michael jordan's playground Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And like, I mean, to me, that just it brings me back to my know. childhood. It's like, it's just, it's great, man. It's like okay. a great, like, it's Jordan in his prime. Like, it's cool. Um, and then another one actually is uh, is the secret. Mm. So the law of attraction yeah. and um, watching that. I've I've probably watched that actually the most out of everything. Oh wow. The secret. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the first on this show. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm I'm about it. I'm, I, like I love it. it. I like yeah. it. Okay, uh, and this this might be the hardest question of the day. Yeah. Best DJ of all time. Ooh, uh, that is the hardest question. And I think the reason why it's the hardest question is because I think every, I've seen some of my idols have bad days. Yeah. And I've seen some of the gr the most unknown DJs, like some local DJ or even a student of mine, just murder a set in a particular like setting like it was the right thing at the right time and just everything lined up so that part is hard man i mean <clears throat> best dj who would you say is your favorite dj man i don't even know if i could give you that it just always changes I, it goes between a couple though 
Guys that I'd always be down to see. Always be down to see Jazzy Jeff. Always be down to see Z Trip. Always be down to see Newmark. Always be down to see Qbert do anything. Um, and then a lot of electronic guys now because um, I'm just in that world. I'd always be down to see Skrillex or Steve Aoki play. Okay. Because I think what they bring to performance is just like next level. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's really tough to, to get to one. But I, I can tell you this. I actually think my favorite DJ is somebody that we haven't even discovered yet. Mm. Like, I think it's somebody that will completely change the game. Yeah. That maybe enrolling in the class in January 2017 <laughs> at Scratch, nice. you know, and, and will literally become like the, my favorite DJ of yeah, all yeah. time. For sure. Uh, so, you know, I, I wouldn't have you plug, but but why, tell me why DJs should come to Scratch Academy. Uh, I think, you know, we haven't had the opportunity to, a lot of us, we have are self-taught. You know, we haven't had the opportunity to even reevaluate why we do certain things. Um, I was telling you, I went to this workshop over the weekend. It was a, essentially billed as a hosting workshop. I host a show every day. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't necessarily need the right. fundamentals of hosting. Yeah. What I got out of that class was next level yeah. and changed a lot of me even. So, you know, whether you're, a, whether you're already a pro and you're trying to find different ways to enhance what you're doing, I know there's a lot of guys that are out there that probably listen to the show that maybe are stuck in a little bit of a rut creatively sure. potentially or you're doing the same thing over and over and over again Absolutely. you know come get a different perspective on it um you know just come and take maybe a lesson or something um and be okay to be in that like in that beginner's seat you know that we can learn a lot yeah. as experts we can learn a lot by being in the beginner seat and yeah. then i'd say for anybody who's just getting started man you know we take a lot of the we take a lot of those frustrating moments yeah. and like really sort of compartmentalize them and put them in a particular order so that oh. there's some process, there's a reason for this. And you're sort of, you know, building the foundation of the house before putting the framing down and then building the framing before yeah. putting, before trying to talk about paint color, you know? And I think that part of it is is really important. And I think we've seen a lot of people get expedited that way. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic community on top of that. Uh, more than I'm anything, sure, you'll yeah. find just great people and just, you know, people that will become lifelong friends, I imagine, even just being inside of a classroom. Nice. Yeah. Well, cool, man. I appreciate you being here. I know you got to get to your next thing. Yeah, man. I appreciate Thank you, you having me, this. man. Definitely. Thank you, dude. Uh, where does everybody find you online? Uh, I'm at DJ Hapa, H A P A, on everything. Okay. Uh, there's there's some other guys that are out there. Uh, shout out to them that spell their that pronounce their name Hapa, but maybe spell it differently. Okay. So make sure DJ Hapa, H A P A. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, man. Um, excited for what the music the mornings news. on Dash Radio. Music mornings on Dash Radio and uh, a ton of other stuff. But yeah, stay oh. updated on everything that we have going on. And man, I appreciate the time. Absolutely. Cool. All right, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. Shout out to DJ Hoppa. Thank you for coming through with all those great insights. Uh, Make sure you tune in next week for more Rebel Radio. In the meantime, send us a message, Twitter, Facebook. Watch the YouTube videos. Leave us an iTunes review. Peace.